So in our house, we have birthdays beginning in July, but it kind of comes in a big wave starting October. <laughs> I feel like it's October, December, January, and then this next baby's gonna be January or somewhere in between all of that. And so uh, we like birthdays. I think they're kind of a big thing in our house, but should they be a big thing? Like how big should they be? Because I think parents feel a lot of pressure to, you know, put out for a birthday and how, how many, how much should you pay for it? Why should you do it? You know, there's all these questions about motivation and, you know, are you really just kind of trying to live through your kid and make sure they have like the best birthday ever? But <laughs> does your kid even want that? Like, are they introverted? And a huge party is just not what their thing is. <laughs> I don't know. We just want to ask some of these questions because we just came off of a birthday for our oldest and it was a little bit unexpected and we thought it'd make it for a good conversation today. Sure. So we'll talk about that and see you on the other side. You know, it's funny when you have young kids, like it, especially if it's your first and it's the first birthday, second birthday, <laughs> it's, there's so much pressure. There's a lot of pressure. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, I don't know what you, there's a lot of work that goes into it. I remember uh, our oldest daughter's first birthday. I mean, it was like a bash. It was. Well, it was her her golden birthday. She's December 1st. So it was like you get. <laughs> but she knows the difference. Right. One. Right. And it's like, oh man, um, we should just got her a cake and that's it. <laughs> With parents. Yeah, and you know, you kind of, it's funny because as you have more kids and you, you get, the the effort is less and less. Part of, that's because, part of that's because your bandwidth is so much less with multiple kids. Well, and your community can kind of change and evolve over time. Right. You know, we had just come out of being in so many different places and we had so many people that we just wanted, they were just celebrating with us. And so, yeah, and then we have friends to leave that, people out. Then you have, you know, because I'm always asking this question, like, are we celebrating it enough or are we celebrating it? too much right that's and the question. when you have friends come over and family come over like the, the amount of gifts i mean oh man man i it's just it's like something's changed it's sure. i don't remember getting that many gifts as a kid and it's like these kids I mean, and we get them a few gifts yeah but our family our friends i mean it just it, it kind of feels a little over the top um and that being said i, I think that's the the picture uh, sure. correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like most Birthdays nowadays are kind of like that. At least maybe we in have a weird friends out in America. Know. Yeah, I don't know. So how much of that pressure is good? How much of it should we uh, really press into as parents? And how much can we slough it off? And, right. And well, and what are the, the opportunities yeah. here that we have as parents to disciple our children yeah. and to train them? And um, I think that, you know, birthdays are good to celebrate. You're celebrating a blessing from the Lord, right? Children, we, we believe that children are a blessing. Mm. That's what the Bible says. And so are we celebrating them? You know, and especially if you have multiples, um, Usually it's like family team, you know, we're all working together all the time. And so to single one out one day a year uh, and to bring in the other siblings to kind of help celebrate them uh, is really, it can be a really fun thing. It can also be a bit of managing yeah. uh, others' emotions, but we'll get into that. So if you don't know us, I'm Selena. This is Ryan, my husband. We are the Fredericks. We're behind all fierce families. Things, fierce parenting, <laughs> fierce marriage, all the things. Yeah, and we're on the parenting side. So we have three daughters. Uh, we have another child on the way. Mm-hmm. Selena is about 34 weeks pregnant. Yes. Come Just on, had, baby. we had an ultrasound recent we did. yesterday, and yes. it was awesome. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, we, we've never done one this late in the. Yeah, in the because state, I'm high day. risk, because I'm 40. They um, are keeping track of the baby, which is good. I want them to. And yeah. I want to. They don't know how hardy my wife under is. Under watch. <laughs> So the Lord stock. is good. The Lord is good. And it was fun seeing baby um, that far yeah. it, it progressed. Yeah. So we, you know, parenting is one of these things. We are just very much, especially on the podcast, we are just talking through things as we learn them. We don't mean to come across like we know everything. You yeah, know, we're not pros. Like, uh, we just want to help others as we struggle ourselves to see <laughs> how scripture really does bear its beautiful weight on our lives and how we are to find the freedom in that. Even in things like birthdays yeah again the conversation did stem out of a little bit of our oldest turn nine she woke up with a temperature she had a fever we were supposed to have a birthday party that night with just a few friends at our house and dinner and she just she was clearly not feeling well and obviously we can't expose other people so we said hey let's see if we can either push it out a week maybe and maybe grandma grandpa and grammys can they can come over and we'll just make it, you know, kind of a family thing tonight. We'll give you our gifts and then we can do a little party next week. Um, and she was fine with that. And we woke up to snow and she actually went out and played in it. Snow is kind of rare where we're at. 
So it was kind of a, it worked out really beautiful. She was outside and she was just like, this is the best birthday ever. And it's like, we hadn't even done anything. I mean, Ryan made crepes. That's her favorite, you know, breakfast. And you, you just kind of take each moment as it comes and make it as special as possible. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. Um, and <laughs> there can be some pressure taken off of it. Although I think we still feel pressure. I still feel pressure <laughs> about parties sometimes. <laughs> but um, I think just for us, we needed to kind of outline what we value about when it comes to birthdays. Right. What are we actually going for? Right. Because it is easy to get caught up with. I mean, I, so we were thinking about having a party at a ro- roller skating rink. Mm-hmm. And you can, as you're kind of hoping to make that happen, and you realize, oh, we got to invite this family. Then let's also invite this family. Oh, she wanted to invite this family. Before you know it, you know, you're inviting people to this thing. And, and it's upward of like four or $500 just to And we just were like, we're not, we can't pay that for a yeah. party kids birthday party that's not in the budget it's not good, good stewardship of yeah. our funds and so we had to call not because you can get caught up in it sure and so it's really helpful early on if you're a young parent it's early on to to calibrate yourself yeah. and understand why do birthdays actually matter mm-hmm. it, well and it, teaching your kids why they matter and it's not so you can show off you know your party throwing skills to your friends or to or to show because i think we can get caught up in mm-hmm. like we want to have a birthday because there's a bit of our identity attached to sure. that and to the party itself. And I think, uh, you know, parties are great. We love to party. Listen, partying is our thing. Okay. But <laughs> it, it, I think partying without the right rooted motive, yeah. motive yeah. yeah, and, and the right um, cause in mind is, I think, a vain pursuit. Right. And so, what do we value when it comes to birthdays, yeah. with our children's birthdays and even our own? Yeah. We value, you know, each child being celebrated and acknowledged and kind of seen and, and, Mm-hmm. made to feel special that day uh we celebrate them and and reminding them that they are a blessing from the lord um ryan always prays for them at their birthday uh for dinner or whatever mm-hmm. we just want everyone to be there celebrating this blessing that the lord has given us um uh for us personally if you know our story if you've read fierce marriage ryan had heart surgery at a young age right. of 20 21 and so each year he has, and maybe many of you have experienced this uh, brush with death, right? So you therefore, or you've lost somebody tragically. And so you know uh, the meaning of kind of every minute, every yeah. hour, every year is just such a gift. And so for us to celebrate that, it, it might look different than other families. Uh, and there's different uh, dynamics that play into that, which we will talk about. But um, just a few scriptures that uh, really kind of hit home for us and and. I think carve out why it's so important for us to celebrate birthdays um, and why we are convinced that yeah. it's fun to do. Not everybody is, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, Psalm 90, verse 12, teach me a number of my days that I might gain a heart of wisdom. I actually really enjoy, uh, this is part of my like personal statement in Psalm mm-hmm. uh, uh, chapter 90, verse 10 is where it starts. It says, though our days are 70 or by reason of strength, 80. Um, it's like basically where it's a vapor and it's here today and gone tomorrow. That's a theme throughout scripture. And, um, to me, birthdays help with that, that numbering your days, yes. right? Uh, so, uh, this is first uh, Corinthians ten thirty one says this. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Mm. Um, and I, I think that also includes celebrations of all kinds. Absolutely. There was, um, there was a quote, uh, from one of my favorite websites, <laughs> Got Questions. But uh, it, it was talking about birthdays. It says, of greater importance than whether or not a Christian celebrates birthdays is how he or she glorifies the Lord in all activities. And it references 1 Corinthians 10.31. If a Christian throws a birthday party, the party should glorify the Lord. Mm-hmm. Sinful behavior should not be a part of a birthday celebration. If a Christian skips birthdays, he or she should fill his time with things that glorify the Lord. Whether or not a Christian celebrates a birthday uh, he or she should strive for a clear conscience and love of his brothers and sisters in Christ. And those who celebrate birthdays should not despise those who don't, and those who ce- who don't celebrate should not look down on those who do. So, again, examining your motives. How are you glorifying the Lord yeah. in celebrating your child's birthday? It occurs to me uh, that there may be a whole side of you know Protestant Orthodoxy Christians mm-hmm. that say birthdays aren't a big deal. If that's you, like, leave a comment on this video. I want to, or in the podcast, whatever. I'd love to know why. Maybe I could just do a, a quick search. Sure. It also occurs to me that uh, Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. <laughs> uh, don't celebrate birthdays. We are not that, um, and the, the, they're not Christian in right. in the Orthodox Protestant sense uh, of that word. Although I don't, they, they might argue that. Um, maybe they would. I don't know. 
they're not Christian. And so I, I wonder what the reasons for that sure. are. And, and maybe if I knew those, I could address them here. But um, it just occurs to me that m- maybe we are in a vacuum here. And that, mm-hmm. that's where it's, oh, we, find, we hope this is helpful to you. And just, just, just in terms of generally talking about how to celebrate things. Right. Well, in the Bible, too, I was doing some research. It only mentions like two people's birthdays. I think it was Herod, one of the Herods, and then Pharaoh, one of the Pharaohs. And it, it wasn't like for a reason to celebrate birthdays. I think it was just like in the narrative of what was, was happening. Born. Yes. Jesus. So, don't forget his birthday. Right. He's in there. You see the Christmas light? Huh? I got a red shirt. We gotta, if you're watching, I have a red green light in the back. A little festiveness. Uh, so, yeah. So, personally, we believe it's it's okay and good and right to celebrate your yeah. kids and birthdays. Uh, we'd love to hear comments about why you don't, maybe. Um uh, and like if you have 12 kids, true. <laughs> just it's, true. it's too much. Yeah. There's, we'll talk about that in yeah. a bit, but, um, or just three kids. That's, that's how yeah. I feel. <laughs> Celebrating can be done creatively. Yeah. Um, and especially on a budget, but again, in all things, we want to honor the Lord, uh, with our finances and with, um, how we, how we use the time that he's given us. So, uh, as we were talking about birthdays, you, you said this word, or maybe it's two words, I don't know, meta-narrative. Yeah. So <laughs> why do you explain the question that? here is why, um, yeah, why, why do we celebrate birthdays? And yeah, as I was explaining to you, I feel like it's an opportunity to really stake, in, uh, I guess, establish your child's meta-narrative in some unique ways. And what I mean by that is they are building a, a kind of story of their, their life unfolding. Mm-hmm. I mean, not, not only, uh, you know, the things that I do and the things I enjoy, but these big questions like, where do I belong? And at what stage in my personal development am I in? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the reason why you have rites of passage, right? You have these these uh, milestones in a young man's life or in a young woman's life where they think that's when I transitioned from maybe a kid into a young per- a person, yeah. or from a young person to a young adult. Um, and so that's what I mean by marinative, which is <laughs> marinate meta narrative, uh, yeah, a little marinate in that, um, which is so important, though, because the conversations today about how boys are, are not becoming men, there's no markers for them. Uh, it's yeah. a blurred line. And then you get men or you get boys that are they're not actually men. They're just boys with beards. Right. I mean, you've heard that saying before um, and, yeah. and they're not stepping into the role and the responsibilities that God's right. purpose for their lives. Same with women. And I mean, it's same. not just because they didn't have the right birthdays. Right? I no, know that's not what you're a, saying. It's a passage, right? It's an opportunity <clears throat> for parents to say, OK, you are no longer this. A, yeah. An eight year old. You are now a nine year old. Right. Or you are you are now a 13, whatever that age is. Yeah. And here's child. Here's what that means. Yeah. It means that you're, you're going to begin to feel these different things. You're going to grow out of this and grow into this. Mm. And as parents, we kind of have to have our head on a swivel and be able to articulate those things in the life and heart of our child and be thinking in those terms because yeah. those things don't just happen. They like don't. We always, I always thought, okay, when we were, you know. You always think as a kid. No, I always when thought as a, when, adult, when right? I became an adult yeah, or you know. even as our kids grow, I'm like, yeah, when, when the birthday comes, I'll just kind of know what to say. I'll know how to <laughs> address the masses, right? The, the three or four families that are there. And I'm going to say, this is our daughter. This is our child. We're very proud and blah, blah, blah. And I always find that in the moment, I almost never know what to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm not saying that you have to have some grand speech, but these are things that I think as parents, part of being an adult and being a parent is thinking through these things ahead of time and yeah. saying, what are those key Absolutely. moments and milestones right. and memories that, uh, that our kids need? And what role do birthdays play in that? Now, not every birthday is a milestone. Right. Uh, you know, obviously like the age 16 is more significant than maybe 11. Right. Right. 18 maybe is more significant than, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and that's honestly, some of those are a little bit arbitrary. Right. Some of those are um, cultural things. But but the, but the point is the birthdays are an opportunity to establish that meta narrative with your child, mm-hmm. namely in how that sits within the cause of Christ and the mm-hmm. work of our God and the, the culture that we are as a Christian home being that. Our faith is a Jewish faith, you know, into mm-hmm. birth and, in, you know, you know, I'm sorry, I'm trying to say Israel, Judah, Christian, all of that, rites of passage. Yeah. Now, this is what this uh, means. So, right. And when you get a little bit more granular, you know, with the opportunities of, of dealing with the actual day itself, right? We've had, we have a nine year old now, a six year old, and a three year old, and uh, our grand finale on the way. Uh, there were some big emotions, at least in our house with some girls. Usually they're pretty chill about, okay, we know it's her birthday. We know she's going to get some presents. 
We know that we and hope that she'll let us play with them, but our three-year-old is still a bit of a tyrant and and doesn't understand <laughs> whose birthday it is and when they get gifts and what that means. And uh, so again, life lessons, right? Teaching and training our children how to navigate and cultivate godliness through these hard emotions and big feelings that they feel of jealousy. Um, you know, Della even dealt with some disappointment because she wasn't feeling well and she was very much looking forward to seeing her friends and having yeah. a party. Uh, and we had to kind of stop and say, okay, what are we grateful for today though? You know, yeah. what are we grateful for? Uh, even though you couldn't have this or you couldn't do that. Uh, it, again, it's a great way to just continually practice uh the, the vocabulary, yeah. practice getting our hearts right before the Lord, saying, Lord, I'm struggling with jealousy. I'm struggling with these things. It, it helps Help our me. kids increase their capacity for Absolutely. suffering. Absolutely, which is great. Which is something that we've been thinking through as a family. Is like, yeah. what does it mean to have a capacity for suffering? Yeah. And to be able to actually go through hard things and not just immediately need a way out or a right. way to alleviate the, the pain. And I'm talking about our youngest. We went, actually, it wasn't for one of our kids' birthday. It was another kid's birthday. We were buying her a gift. We were oh, at Target. Yes. And she was <clears throat> convinced that, that this thing that we were buying for the friend was should have been for her. Yes. And we tried to explain it, and she just couldn't get it through her little tiny little head. <laughs> uh, it's not for you. Does that mean we just buy her something to get rid of that? Right. No. That that dissonance that she's feeling that this this yeah. is a cool thing. It, you want it? It's not yours. It's yeah. not for you. Deal with it. Yeah. And uh, that's an opportunity. That's maybe one example. And there's a thousand ways that could play out around a birthday. I would say that's a good way to like deal with dissonance and suffering, quote unquote, for a child. Right. Like I I don't know. Not getting was, what you I, want. Yeah. Is it, it's a version of suffering for a child. Sure. But, and it's not you know. T- it's not like they're going hungry or I, yes. I'm just trying to like calibrate yeah. birthday suffering versus. So you're not going to eat. Actual. You're going to grow in your capacity for suffering. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, life lessons like that. And so there's this yeah. grand meta narrative. Then there's the in the, you know, the in the trenches, granular yeah. things that we can uh, teach them. Right. Celebrating one another. Right. It's not like this is not your day to just be like, it's not okay just to, uh, refuse to say jealous things or to you know be, have envious thoughts right. we need to flip the switch and say we're actually celebrating yeah. this member of our household specifically today right. and and that's okay and it's yeah. good and right and everybody else can just take a back seat they're in the hot seat um <laughs> and we, we i say hot seat it's just basically like the breakfast table like what do you enjoy about you know yeah, what do you love about go your around sister? and say you know something affirming yeah. to the birthday person yeah um and so that that <clears throat> flips the, the script a little bit from I'm just trying to hold back my negative emotions, but now I'm actually offering. Right. It's, an, it's take, going from defense to offense Yeah. on that. So um, getting into a, a few of the tangible, I think is helpful in these instances. So how should we, or how can we celebrate them? Again, it might depend on how you and your spouse uh, value birthdays and how you were raised uh, and the size of your family, I would say is probably one of the, the biggest keys. We have friends that have upwards of six, you know, seven kids. Um, and they don't celebrate every kid every year, like not a big party. Not every kid gets a party every year. They have decided every four years they'll their child will get that child will get a bigger birthday. So you hit the four, the eight, the twelve, the sixteen, you know. And so they kind of hit some of the major milestones. Financially, it's feasible, um, and it makes it you know the kids look forward to it. And it's not like they don't, aren't made to feel special on their birthdays, but a bigger party comes every couple right. years. And so I'm just thinking of our, our friend, um, our friends, Dan and Jackie, Dan, he's committed to, I don't know how he did it or why he did it. I do not envy him, but for some reason, every time there's a birthday in the household, he is expected to make this elaborate fondant cake. <laughs> he likes it. He likes it though. It's something I he enjoys I get the sense doing. that he enjoys it, but it's also a lot of work. I'm sure it is. I mean, some of these His, cakes that he makes, they're unbelievable. Yeah. And I don't understand how he makes them. But it's a family thing. And, so well, the kids like put in their order like a month in advance. <laughs> and like these orders are, they're they're complex. Yeah. And he rises to the challenge. And they're beautiful. And uh, we always are dad. watching on social media to see what cake did Dan yeah. make that year for <laughs> one of whatever kid, you know, whatever birthday it was. So you, I think it's just things like that that make it so special, though, and make yeah. it most more significant. And they are yeah. actually the same family that... Uh, they always pray for their kids on their birthdays, and they've modeled that, and something that I just I love, and I've always wanted us mm-hmm. to do. And um, One of the reasons we classically educate. One of they them. are. Yeah. <laughs> they introduced me to introduce us to it. So, um, again, 
consider your factors. How many kids are in your in your family? Mm-hmm. Um, how, what do you and your spouse agree on in terms of what do you value uh, about a birthday? How big should they be? Um, and how can you glorify God in that? Uh, and then have birthday boundaries, <laughs> right? Uh, have you ever read the Berenstein Bears book, Too Much Birthday? <laughs> it's like the kid just like melts down afterwards, which is yeah. pretty true for most kids after birthdays. But uh, like we said, we had to look at budget, location. We live in the Northwest. In December, you can't really have a birthday outside. It's just wet yep. and cold. Uh, enlist family to help. You know, there's there's definitely lower mm-hmm. budget ways to be able to accomplish, you know, feeding and celebrating with, with others. Yeah, you don't need an extravagant amount of money to make along. birthdays meaningful. Yes. And that's maybe a lie that needs to be dispelled overtly in our own hearts and in, right. in the hearts of our listeners. Right. Is that, uh, yeah, you don't need to break the bank. You don't have to. I mean, you can you can get a cake mix box for like two bucks. <laughs> And make it special, candles, all the, the whole thing. Della loves making it with me. Right. Like, that's one of her favorite and so things. The point is the intentionality yeah, around it. Absolutely. And so this is not a, a, a matter of how much money you can blow. It's a matter of how, how much can we, how much in, intent can we bring to the right. equation. And for some people that might be taking a, taking a moment and saying, okay, I don't have to, you know, drop this amount of money for us to have fun. There's other ways that we can have fun together. Um, smaller parties are some of the best parties, in mm-hmm. my opinion, when you're able to kind of, you know, yeah. hang out with that that birthday person and, and interact, do some sort of activity. Um, so, again, glorifying and honor, honoring the Lord in the decisions that you make and in how you steward uh, the life of your child and how you're discipling mm-hmm. them and training them. You know, we have our three tenets of the first one, all parenting is discipleship. So how are we discipling our children through these types of celebrations? How are we discipling them as the birthday person uh, and acting in such a way that is is humble, right? Mm-hmm. Enjoying what they get, but of course not hamming it up. And then how do you deal with their siblings and their dyna- that dynamic of them not yeah. being in the spotlight or them getting a toy and not wanting to share in that moment when they first get it. Or as they get older, just not getting maybe the thing that they think they, they should thought, get. Yeah. You know, like you get a 14 year old who is basically saying like, this is the year I should get an iPhone and you're making a decision. No, it's not the sure. year. Well, do you just say no and let them deal with it or do you disciple them through that? Right, right. Listen, here's why we're not going to get that gift for you. Yep. And opportunities he, he, for conversation he, here's why you can trust us in that and why it's because we love you yeah so on and so forth uh we've plugged them many times but our friends over at the gospel tech podcast yeah. talk about this they're the reason why i say things like that um very cognizant cognizant yeah. cognizant excuse me of those things um so that's the first tenet all of parenting is discipleship the second one is that children are in fact a blessing which yeah. we've mentioned a lot here which is why we celebrate blessings <laughs> right and it doesn't mean again we go over and you know over the overboard it just means that we are intention intentional about it. Yeah. The final one is that family is God's idea. And so applying that to birthdays, um, it, how, what did you mean by that? So we we deal with birthdays and family dynamics in light of this fact that families, family is God's idea. Yeah, I think, you know, for some moms, I've heard them, you know, say they go through like their birth pictures that day or they, they mm-hmm. remember that moment that the child was born and they think about or they write letters to each of their children their children on those birthdays and just remembering that this was god's idea this was god's plan and purpose for Hmm. for either that little life or for the life of our family right and so how can we again just kind of engage how should we deal with birthdays in light of knowing that this is all God's idea. This is all, this is not me outside of his purpose and plan doing my own thing, but this is God gave us a child at this time and we're celebrating their age. That's really good. Um, so within that, and again, using wisdom and That's really good. And that, that I think strikes to the heart of um, why we we have these tenets because the, what we believe that scripture is true, that the God yeah. of the Bible is true. He's real, he's alive, he's active in our hearts and our minds because he gives us the context for everything experience in life good or bad good or evil we have context because we know the god Mm. of the universe the god who created us the god who governs our universe and uh, without his context frankly i don't know you know all this seems awfully arbitrary yeah and so uh we if you don't know christ if you don't know the god of the bible if you don't understand what it means to you know, disciple your kids and you want that, uh, the first step is to be a disciple yourself, a Mm -hmm. disciple of Christ. And if you want to take the next step down that path, we have a website, it's thenewsisgood.com. It's thenewsisgood.com. And it's just got some basic 
uh, doctrines there to show you what it means to become a Christian and steps forward mm-hmm. um, in that journey. We pray that you would take that um, if, if the Lord leads you. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the gift of celebrating that mm-hmm. we can do do that even unto your glory, that when we eat, when we drink, when we breathe every breath, that we can celebrate that each each moment, each instance is ordained by you, blessed by you, allowed by you, uh, and and uh, and we can enjoy it mm-hmm. in light of who you are. Pray for the parents that are um, growing into their parenthood. If they have young kids or they've had kids for many years, I pray that you just continue to give them wisdom. I pray that if they need wisdom around celebrations, around birthdays, that they would have it and that they would not just endure these types of things, but but be intentional in discipling their children through these various milestones of their lives. In your name, amen. Amen. I thank you for joining us. If you're still sticking around, thank you for giving us your time, your eyes, your ears. If you yeah. want to partner with us, that's one of the main ways that we are able to sustain this ministry. Go to fierceparenting.com slash partner. We would be overjoyed to meet you there. Um, and But either way, by the grace of God, as the Lord wills, we will continue to do this week in and week out with maybe a few breaks here and there with this baby coming along <laughs> very quickly. Um, so with that said, this episode of Fierce Parenting is... In the camp. See you again in seven days. Until next time. Stay fierce.